we know that a lot of the American companies are very invested in safety. And that is the central culture of a place like Anthropic. And I think Anthropic sounds like a wonderful place to work. But if safety is your number one goal, it takes way longer to get artifacts out. That's why Anthropic is not open sourcing things. That's their claims. But there's reviews internally. Anthropic um, raises, it mentions things to international governments. There's been news of how Anthropic has done pre-release testing with the UK AI Safety Institute. All of these things add inertia to the process of getting things out. And we're on this trend line where the progress is very high. So if you reduce the time from when your model is done training, you run a vals that's good, you want to get it out as soon as possible to maximize the perceived quality of your outputs. Mm-hmm. Deep Seek does Dar- this so well. Dario explicitly said Claude 3.5 Sonnet was trained like nine months or a nine year to ago. ten months ago. Nine to ten months ago, and I think it took them another like handful of months to release it. Right, so it's like there is there is a significant gap here, right? And especially with reasoning models, uh, the word in the San Francisco street is that like Anthropic has a better model than O3, right? And they won't release it. Why? Because chains of thought are scary, right? They're, and they are legitimately scary, right? If you look at R1. It flips back and forth between Chinese and English. Sometimes it's gibberish. And then the right answer comes out. Right. And like for you and I, it's like, great. <laughs> great. I mean, like, like people are infatuated with you. Like, you're telling me this is a high value thing and it works and it's doing this. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, you talked about that uh, sort of like uh, chain of thought for that philosophical thing, yeah. which is not something they trained to, it to be philosophically good. It's just sort of an artifact of the chain of thought training it did. Um, but like, that's super important in that, like, can I inspect your mind and what you're thinking right now? No. Um, and so I don't know if you're lying to my face. Uh, and chain of thought models are that way, right? Like this is this is a true quote unquote risk between, you know, a chat application where, hey, I asked the model to say, you know, bad words or whatever, or or how to how to make anthrax. And it tells me that's unsafe, sure, but that's something I can get out relatively easily. What if I tell the AI to do a task and then it does the task all of a sudden randomly in a way that I don't want it, right? And now that has like much more task versus like response is very different, right? So the bar for safety is much higher. At least this is Anthropic's case, right? Like for DeepSeek, they're like, ship, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the bar for safety is probably lowered a bit because of DeepSeek. I mean, there's parallels here to the space race. The reason the Soviets probably put a man in space first is because the, their approach to safety was, uh, the bar for safety was lower. And they, they killed that dog, right? And all these things, right? So it's like- uh, Less risk averse uh, than, the, the, than the US space program. And there's parallels here. But you know, there's probably going to be downward pressure on that safety bar for the US companies, right? And this is something that Dario talks about. Is like, that's a situation that Dario wants to avoid. Is Dario talks to about the difference between a race to the bottom and a race to the top. And the race to the top is where there's a very high standard on safety. There's a very high standard on your model performs and certain val- crucial evaluations. And when certain companies are really good to it, they will converge. This is the idea. And ultimately, AI is not confined to one nationality or to one like set of morals for what it should mean. And there's a lot of arguments on like, should we stop open sourcing models? And if the US stops, it's pretty clear. I mean, it's way easier to see now at DeepSeek that a different international body will be the one that builds it. They, mm-hmm. We talk about the cost of training. DeepSeek has this shocking $5 million number. Think about how many entities in the world can afford 100 times that to have the best open source model that people use in the world. And it's like, it's a scary reality, which is that these open models are probably going to keep coming for the time being, whether or not we want to stop them. And it is hard, like stopping them might make it even worse and harder to prepare. But it just means that the preparation and understanding what AI can do is just so much more important. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm here at the end of the day. But it's like letting that sink into people, especially not in AI, is that like, this is coming. There are some structural things in a global interconnected world that you have to accept. 